So I was really interested in getting a new 3D printer and we had a discussion last week about the pros and cons of which type of printer I should get. And all of you made some recommendations and I followed them. And now I have two bamboo printers and I've been using them and I have some impressions uh, based on that experience. So uh, bamboo printers, if you haven't seen them are kind of, uh, at least for me, they just came on my radar like maybe within the last year. Uh, there's something that is much more geared towards like it just works, like a little bit more of a kind of closed source mentality than like Prisa, but also, I mean, at least the one that I got uh, in Montana, it looks like a giant toaster to me. It just looks like a big toaster. Um, it is enclosed. It allows you to print with a number of different, uh, typically rather tricky materials, and it has an automatic filament management system that lets you print with multiple colors without having to do anything to swap those colors yourself. So usually if you're 3D printing, like, you know, you can print in one color and then maybe you can like stop a layer and then swap it out manually, but it's really annoying to print in multiple colors. Uh, Bamboo has figured out how to do this with their filament management system. However, it's very wasteful. Um, I have a bin just full of waste from this printer, which is getting bigger and bigger every time I do a print that involves a lot of layer swaps. And to think about like what would be a wasteful print versus not a wasteful print, I'll show two examples of things that I printed. Also though, these are really cool and I wanna just show these prints off because I think they're great. So first off, <clears throat> I have Mr. Yuck. Mr. Yuck is also two-sided and uh, glows in the dark. So this is one of my favorites that I've done and kind of shows off the potential of how this printer can make things that are um, kind of delightful. Like the fact that this glows in the dark is pretty cool. Um, so uh, this print is goes all the way through and every single layer has to switch between green and black. So as a result, for every layer of this, uh, it creates a kind of like maybe pea-sized amount of weight. And that really starts to stack up over time. So the thicker I make this, the more waste there's going to be. Now, another print I did was uh, kind of small, but I'll hold them up here. I also have a, a picture I'll show on the screen in a little bit. This um, QR code, and it seems like some parts of it are kind of hanging in the air, but the way that it works is, so um, these are glowing 3D printed QR codes. Now there's a number of reasons why I would want to make these. Like for one, you you guys have been around through all of my presentations about how QR codes can be made evil. So you can put like specialized Wi-Fi networks on here. You can make it so people that scan it, you can take over their phone's internet connection. Um, there's all sorts of, you know, hackery, uh, malicious applications of, Q of QR codes, but also some just delightful cool ones. And one of them would be if you have a dark environment that occasionally gets up lit up by headlights or flashlights or whatever, then you can make something that glows and it glows pretty, pretty, I, I would say dimly, but consistently for about 30 minutes after it's illuminated. So this is, I think it's East, maybe it's Eastend Glowing PLA. I'll have to double check the exact brand, but it is the worst material I have worked with in a long time. It is not good for the extruder. Uh, it is very rough and makes it so that it's difficult for it to extrude properly. And also um, it jams all of the time. This thing is guilty for, I would say 80 to 90% of the printing uh, errors I've had. But I've been able to print something that, let's see if I have a, another picture of it. Oh yeah, and you can see the glowing uh, Mr. Yuck with the phosphorescence going on. But, uh, oh yeah, here we go. Typically when I'm making a QR code, I have to run a process that takes all of these floating islands and stuff and bridges them. So it creates like a little bridge on the side to allow them to stay on the print. That makes it a little annoying to print QR codes because like you have to either do a multicolor one or, or something like that. This I really like because it is a two-sided um, glowing QR code and it uses a clear um, PLA uh, in order everything together so that I don't need to do those bridges and I can make it a little easier for maybe some tricky scanners to read. I found this QR code is super, super easy for scanners to read. And while it's not exactly where I want it, uh, I do think that this is an interesting first experiment into how you can use multicolor printing to make some interesting objects that maybe weren't, if not possible before, they were quite a lot trickier to do. So this print right here is actually like a, a clear layer, like a clear base layer, and then it swaps, and then it just prints in this green glow in the dark. So that actually only produces one little piece. So this is multiple layers thick. There's like a clean layer swap where it swaps from one to the other. And at that point, it only makes one piece of waste. So this is a very efficient print. And I kind of have to think about that when I'm designing any new 
object that's going to use this multicolor process. Because I find if um, if I stop paying attention, hopefully that was also um, showing. Yes. Um, if, uh, if I stop paying attention to what's going to generate a ton of waste, um, for one, there's the opportunity that one of the filaments jams while it's doing its swap. Uh, it creates, as I said, a lot of waste. And then also, um, it just has the opportunity to introduce problems into the print. So the more you can angle your print so it's reducing these swaps, the better. And like if you just kind of do it without thinking, I mean, you know, it's probably fine. But um, I would say that the bamboo printers I've worked with now also work with Bamboo Studio. So let me show you guys at Bamboo Studio. So let's say we're we're going to slice this. Um, so I can click on slice plate. I'm sure that the computer is going to enjoy me doing this. Um, and after a while, it'll give me a preview of exactly what's going to happen on every layer, including uh, filament swaps. Now, um, I think it'll also give me like an estimate of uh, like how much waste it's going to produce, which is useful information. Um, but yeah, like that's that's almost the final step here is we'll get an estimate on how long it's going to take for the print to go, uh, and we'll be we'll be able to go layer by layer by layer and see exactly what's going on. So again, I'm I'm enchanted by this because this wasn't previously possible to have these automated layer swaps, and here we go. We can see what the final result is going to look like, and we can also see if if there's like a really bad result and like the, the image just doesn't look right, we'll probably get some hints for how it's going to look here and be able to adjust things and make sure that it does look the way that we want it to look. So this looks terrible. So we're going to move forward. Um, if I hit print plate, then it will allow me to uh, decide on which of my bamboo printers I want to print. So I can print something off on toaster, which is my LA printer, or, or sorry, my Montana toaster printer, and then uh, Los Angeles, my normal A1 uh, not enclosed printer. And I can also do a final filament map over here and make sure that the filament matches what I'm expecting and that when I hit send, it actually has all the right filament settings done. Now, this bed leveling, flow dynamic calibration, enable AMS, like obviously we want to enable AMS. Um, that's the automated management system for the filament. But uh, the flow dynamic calibration does waste um, some filament, but it allows the print to have a uh, really good consistency by making sure that any weirdness in the way that the filament is extruding uh, is taken care of in the diagnostic step. So finally, we have the actual device. So we can see the configuration. We can see the last print. I can also start up the camera and see a live view of the printer, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then I can also switch over to the other printer and see a live view of that one as well. So. Um, on this one, I have like uh, the official bamboo filament in it. So it's like much more aware of what's going on in these first two. On this, these second ones, it like doesn't believe me necessarily, but uh, still pretty cool that I can initiate and spy on prints from basically anywhere. In this case, I can just go to, uh, let's see, uh, oh, right here. Well, let me just do it again. No, I guess it won't just let me do it again. That's too bad. But um, yeah, so full management of printers like from the same interface that you're slicing on, which is pretty cool until it crashes, which is not all of the time, but definitely some of the time. Um, and that is the basic process of going through taking an SVG file and then colorizing it uh, and getting an actual print that looks good.